Delhi, a mega city of 16 million people, heart of the new India. Somewhere in this city, a young woman is in terrible danger. Can she be found in time? One of the girls, having got access to a neighbor's telephone, is trying to tell them where she is. She's adrift in one of the world's biggest cities, and she's saying her owners have just threatened to sell her into prostitution in Mumbai, where she'll be lost forever. This is a story about how modern slavery works, and about how the price you pay for your cherished tea <laughs> drives an ancient trade that many assume has been consigned to history. Here in the northeastern state of Assam, they grow the tea that goes into the world's best-selling brands. On the Naharani tea plantation, the giant amalgamated plantations grows the prized leaves that go into Tetley tea. The workers who pick the leaves live on the estate and are paid as little as 91 pence per day for a six-day week. That's just over half of the basic minimum wage. The plantation is jointly owned by a consortium, including Tetley's parent company, Tata Global Beverages, and the World Bank's investment arm. It is also the subject of an investigation into working conditions by the World Bank. Their children are easy prey for traffickers. Kalash Satyati heads Bachpan Bachao Andolan, India's leading child rescue organization. For 33 years, he's been rescuing children from slavery in India. Slavery is a huge problem, and the children are the worst victims of it. As the middle class is mushrooming, they look for the cheap source of domestic help. They look for young children, or girls particularly. And sometimes these girls could also be used for easy sex and all sort of abuse. Fourteen girls at least are missing from the Nahorani plantation. Lakshmi Munda's mother has only memories of her daughter. A cartel of owners, including Tetley's owners, has persuaded the Assamese state that they cannot afford to pay the full legal minimum of £1.69 a day in cash. But this has created a breeding ground for the slave trade. And while the companies admitted to the Guardian investigation that they pay below the minimum wage, the tea companies say they make up for the low wages with accommodation and schools for the workers on their plantations. This is Delhi, heart of the new lucrative India where a booming middle class demands domestic servants to ease their new demanding lifestyles. But this comes at a price, and that price is paid by the staff. Thousands of agencies supply girls to these families. They source the girls from families who cannot afford to keep their children. This is what makes the tea estates of Assam, where their poverty pays, so attractive. Most of them went with the traffickers on the promise of a better life, despite the fact that many of those that had gone before them had simply disappeared. The BBA embark on rescue missions all year round to reclaim the lost girls. Actually, today is planning to do a rescue operation for searching the parents coming from Assam. 13 girls and boys. One of the girls they're looking for is Samila. She was 16 when the slavers conned her with the promise of an office job. किवा किवी तेसे कुछ कुछ बोला उसको बलखाया और उसको उसको दिल टूटा दिया वे बाद में उसको लालची आ गया लालची आ गया हम लोग को तो कोई किसी को पता ही नहीं हम लोग डिप्टी में चला गए थे सोनीचर का दिन रहा वो वो शाम को टाइम में ले गया 
They are not alone. Of the 14 girls missing from the plantation, all of the families spoken to for this investigation told us of unknown men approaching their daughters with tales of the high life in Delhi. It has taken months for the rescue team to track the girls through their network of informers. But finally they have a match on the traffickers of the girls from the tea plantation. As part of the Guardian and Observer investigation into how poverty wages drive young girls into the arms of traffickers, the rescue team agrees to take us and the families to Delhi to search for their daughters. It has already taken two months to get this far, to try to achieve the impossible, to find even one of the 14 lost girls in a mega city more than a thousand miles away. But D, one of the researchers who has tracked the traffickers and the agents, is hopeful. He has to remain anonymous because he's received death threats from the traffickers. We uh, work on this uh, two, three months continue and now finally we have all the information. And now with the parents, I'm sitting here in the train and we are going to Delhi. After 36 hours, we, when we reach in Delhi, we'll just keep them in the safe place it's in our, our own uh, rehabilitation centre. Then immediately we'll go to define the addresses and we'll get back their children. And 100% I'm hoping that we do, we will win. No way the trafficker can win. The following day, as they're having their final pre-rescue briefing, with the local police on standby as backup, a phone call is received out of the blue. It's Samila, saying oh. that her owners have got wind of the rescue. Samila and plan to move her to Mumbai. Now all that matters is finding her in time. They continue to contact Samila, who's secretly using her employer's phone. She provides an address, but not knowing Delhi, it isn't clear. An educated guess is made. The address of this house is very close to the police station. This kind of things cannot run without the connivance or without knowledge of police. But there's not even enough time to get an official search warrant. We will definitely find that girl. They think Sumila is in a wealthy middle-class district. The local police are in place and the neighbours are curious, but they're kept back, as is our camera. We're not allowed to film as the rescue team and the police knock on the door. <laughs> the owners <laughs> hand Samila over. Samila Tanti, three years a slave, is free. <laughs> This looks like a very big success, Mr. Keller. Yeah, it's a great success today. It's like I find found my own daughter. <laughs> the other parents are distraught that their daughters are still missing. The agent responsible for placing Sumila with the family is arrested. Sumila has been held as a slave, locked in the house and paid nothing for grueling 17-hour days. Uh, normally they keep these girls as maid servant for 11 months uh, just to escape from all the legal things and then they send it to somewhere else. <laughs> She was feeling very uh, cold here and uh, they did not even give her cloth and she said that there is a cloth for you, some, uh, some um, bed cover sheet. 
Six days later, a new raid rescues another girl from the Naharani plantation. The trafficker escapes, but another family is reunited. In the last two years, the BBA has rescued 2,600 children, and many of those traffickers were prosecuted and jailed. But there are still estimated to be over 100,000 missing girls out there, working as maids in Delhi, often unpaid, with one-fifth subjected to physical and sexual abuse. The tea companies say they cannot pay another rupee more. But the campaigners who've spent a lifetime rescuing these girls say that a decent wage might at least begin to offer an alternative to slavery. <laughs>